My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Only a week ago, the Gospel of the day was Jesus curing ten lepers. And only one came back to give him thanks. It was a great Gospel passage to pray about Thanksgiving. And in ten minutes with Jesus, we did. There is a beautiful meditation about giving thanks to God. It was on November 15th, 2023. And it has the title, Turn Back and Give Thanks. Turn back and give thanks to God. To give thanks for the many things that He has given us. Turn back and give thanks to people for the services that they render us throughout the day. And so today, we are going to live that out again. We're going to turn back again in thanksgiving to God. Today, which in the United States of America, we celebrate Thanksgiving Day. So you can understand that it's impossible for me not to pray about Thanksgiving today, not to give lots of thanks in my prayer. That Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for a new day. I thank you for my faith. I thank you for having come to me in communion this morning. I thank you for having permitted me to celebrate Mass once again. I thank you for all the confessions that I've heard this week. And so on. There are so many things that I need to give thanks to God for. So many things that He's given me. And hopefully that helps you to do the same. Because He is loving us all the time. And maybe you can hit the pause button and start to improv on your own, telling our Lord what you're grateful for. And I wanted to use something for our prayer today, which is the Thanksgiving proclamation of the first president of the United States, George Washington. This Thanksgiving proclamation was given on October 3rd, 1789 in which he declares that the following November 26th, 1789, they will celebrate a holiday, a day dedicated to giving thanks to God. And he says, he says, I do recommend and assign Thursday, 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being, who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. That we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation. For the signal and manifold mercies that we experience in the course and conclusion of the late war, the Revolutionary War, for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have enjoyed since, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been able to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted, for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general for all the great and various favors which he hath been pleased to confer upon us. A bit of a long quote, but there's a lot there. Maybe you pause and replay it and listen to it slower. But he goes down a list of specific things that he's grateful for. Specific signs of God's love and mercy for 
this particular country. And we ourselves, what am I thankful for? What am I grateful for? There is a common exercise in the United States around this time, as you could imagine, to ask people what they are thankful for. And there was one program that had parents ask their young children this question. And so as you can imagine, they got all different kinds of answers from the children. Very normal, everyday answers. Of, Thank you for my mommy and daddy. But then also got some other ones, some, some zany answers. And I wanted to read a couple of them. So this was from one four, four-year-old girl. She said, that she was grateful that her brother was not a monster, because if he was, he would eat her. Another uh, three-year-old boy was thankful for ceiling fans. That is a great gift. I've never given thanks for ceiling fans. Another boy was thankful for the trash truck driver. A five-year-old boy was thankful for his dog. And his father found that funny because the boy does not have a dog. So I thought, well, I remember somebody giving me the advice of thanking our Lord for what I'm asking for before I even get it. As a way of trusting him. Trusting that he will get me what I need. So maybe that's what this little boy was doing. But regardless of how zany, (laughs) how funny or how ordinary we might be thanking our Lord for for different things, it's important that it be very concrete and specific. The way George Washington was in his speech. And another thing he does is he's giving thanks in the name of others, in the name of an entire country. And we can also have that attitude. When we pray, we wish to represent the church, or our family, our country, all of humanity. I remember once the previous prelate of Opus Dei, Don Javier Echeverria, at Christmas time, he encouraged us to go to, to the nativity scene, to enter into the stable in order, to, in order to pray before Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But he said to do it knowing that we represent all of humanity. And so we can do that today. We can do it every day of the year. We represent our country. We represent all of humanity, the whole world. That, Lord, I come to you to give thanks, and I represent my brothers and sisters in the faith. All of my brothers and sisters throughout the world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything. Thank you for very specific things. But we do so in the name of others, in the name of my family, my friends, the church, my country. We are grateful. And many people may not realize how grateful they are or or how grateful they should be to God. Well, we do it on behalf of them as well. And a great moment to have this attitude is at Mass. When you go to Mass, and we're grateful to our Lord for having died on the cross and risen from the dead and giving us communion, we're giving thanks not just for us, for ourselves individually, but for everybody. For the whole world, because we want the whole world to be saved. We want the whole world to realize how much God loves us and that we love him back. So we can have that attitude at Mass, but you could also have that attitude every time you say grace before a meal and give thanks to God for that meal. G.K. Chesterton poses a very basic, fundamental question that can help us examine ourselves on one of those fundamental attitudes that we can have in life. He says, when it comes to life, the critical thing is whether you take things for granted or whether you take them with gratitude. Whether I take things for granted or whether I take them with gratitude. What does it mean to take something for granted? Take something for granted is to fail to appreciate someone or something, thinking that that thing or that person is always available. Jesus, I don't want to have that attitude. I don't want to take things for granted. I want to be grateful. I want to have an attitude of gratitude. That's what I want 
to define my life, my being. That people could say of me, that person is a grateful person. Now, that's not my goal. My goal isn't that people just are able to say that and that's it, so I have a reputation. No, I I truly want to be a grateful person, Lord. I do. And so, Jesus, thank you. Each one of us, regardless of where we are, whether we're celebrating Thanksgiving or not, whatever country we're in, Jesus, we come to you on behalf of the entire world to give you thanks. Thank you for the incarnation. Thank you for the world. Thank you for a new day. And may all of us grow in this attitude of gratitude. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.